Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel that takes you through the fog with season two of our countdown to HHN series where for the whole month of August we're going to be giving you fun and in-depth videos to get you prepared and excited for this year's Halloween Horror Nights. Just this last week we asked our viewers to leave us a question about HHN or anything regards to our personal experience with the event and as always you guys delivered. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and answer a few of those questions that we got more in detail. So without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off season two of countdown to HHN. What better way to start off this year's season than putting this video into the hands of you, our viewers, and answering your burning questions about HHN. Now, we won't be able to get through all of those questions that we did receive. However, we're gonna deeply dive into seven of those questions. Starting off with our first question from Zoe Powers, which is, if you could change one thing about HHN, what would it be? Zoe, I have one word for you, and that is expansion. Now, what I mean by expansion is not just the overall expansion of HHN, as in like more houses, more scare zones, food, drinks, and all that stuff, but let's bring back a fan favorite of Islands of Adventure. Let's expand to both parks. Now, we do have Epic Universe on its way, which shouldn't be much longer, 2025, and I do have a feeling that with Epic Universe coming in, HHN could really play into part with having both parks into the mix. So that's what I would do is expand the event in a sense. What would you do, Steph? Ooh, I think if I had to pick one thing, it would be nutrition facts on all of the food so that I could track my macros at HHN. No, in all seriousness, I think that I would pick more immersion. And what I mean by that is HHN is already very immersive. But I would love to see like scare actors in the lines, maybe, maybe like more backstory videos, more like theming in the lines. And then I also think it would be pretty cool to have the scare zones like continuous throughout the entire park. So you're saying like expansion of the scare zones? Yeah, too. kind of there you expansion, go. immersion. I actually, I actually like that idea of like making the scare zone or not the scare zones, excuse me, the um, the lines of the house is much more immersive. Now, one thing I do like is when they have those videos playing, and you can hear the music, but mm -hmm. one thing that sucks is HHN is like all their houses is always like an hour wait, most like majority of the time right. at least. Just imagine like, of course, having those hour long lines, but you have scare actors coming through the lines and interacting with you, maybe even more like interactive elements. And maybe even like you were talking about this earlier with me, where we can actually have like storylines for the houses through the queue line. Um, kind of like how the rides are at Universal and Disney and all that stuff where they keep you engaged throughout the line. I think that would be really cool. So that's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. Now moving on to our next question, which comes from Blue Hawk and it states, what is the best route for Stain Scream? And he also added in there, what is our most anticipated house for the event? So we will be doing a most anticipated video coming up after we get all of the announcements and we know what houses are going to be at the event. But I think as of right now, it's probably Legends Collide. And then as far as Stay and Scream goes, it really depends on what houses are at the event, where they're located. So it's hard to know right now, but we really enjoyed last year staying in Springfield and then doing one of the parade buildings. So last year that was Hill House or Beetlejuice because those got really long lines. And then we would go and do the sprung tents in the back, get a good like, three or four houses in before the event even opens up. And then we would come back and do the other parade building later in the night. Now talking about our most anticipated house, we actually have our next question, which comes from Zach Nobles and it states, what are you most excited for in this year's event? So like houses, scare zones, food, or anything of that sort. I think I'm just overall excited for the theme. We've been talking for a while about this year being a traditional, Halloween year and it seems like it's shaping out to be that we have you know the All Hallows Eve boutique is very like vintage Halloween vibes and then we also have this new teaser I guess you could call it in the tribute store that popped up this week that is very much pointing to a very like vintage 
traditional wicked growth type of Halloween year. So moving on to our next question, which is going to be from Armin E. And he asks, what are your tips for HHN first timers who get scared easily? And I feel like this is a good question for you. Brian. Yeah, I actually think this is a good question for me along in what I think is scary and stuff. And, and this is something we always have to say with everybody else. What may be scary to me may not be scary to you and vice versa. But I think the best like advice that we can give to people is like bring some earplugs or like headphones or something like that. So the houses are very loud in HHN, especially the triggers that they have and even the scare zones. So that's like an overstimulated thing that people can't really cooperate with. Even me, to be honest, sometimes oh, yeah. it gets a little too loud at some points. So I would say bring some like earplugs or something to kind of tune out that noise. And then we also recommend when you get there, if you're a little nervous to go through the houses right at the start, go through the scare zones for a little bit, get a little warmed up. You know, they won't really come at you too, too bad in the scare zones. And if it's still daylight out, it's not quite as scary. So that can get you warmed up and then head into the houses. Now moving on to our next question, which comes from Tim Purcell. And it's probably our favorite question of the day, and that is, what is the best snack or food item that we've had at the event? Yeah, that is such a good question. We love the HHN snacks, and I think our both of our favorites come specifically from last year's event. I know mine is the No Chance in Hell PB&J, which was a deep fried Uncrustable that had honey on top and I think like red chili pepper flakes, I don't know, but it was a little bit spicy and crunchy and gooey, it was so good. Now I will have to say my favorite one wasn't the No Chance in Hell PB&J, which it was a really good snack, don't get me wrong, but I would probably have to go ahead and say that brisket they had in the Haunting of Hill House little food booth was my absolute favorite food item I've ever had at any of the theme parks, to be honest. I could probably go ahead and get those every single day. And of course, nice little drink on the side because it was a little hearty, wasn't like too sweet like the rest of the food items. So definitely would go with the brisket again from HHN 30. All right, moving on to our next question, which is a more logistical question. And this comes from Nightmare on Falls Brook. And they asked, parking, how much, what to avoid, and if you should get there early on event night. It's actually a good question. It really is. We do get a question like this a lot and it's hard to really say like the parking price may change and some other tips, but the number one thing that we could really break it down when it comes to parking is pretty much plan to get there early. This is like one of the biggest tips that we can pretty much give to anybody. We want you to get there early because if you get there around the time everybody else is, Universal has parking garages for parking at City Walk and to get into the events and stuff like that. So just imagine you got hundreds of people just lining up, getting ready to go in at the same time as you. It's gonna be about a 30 minute wait, even up to an hour at some points. Now, there's days that we've done this before and that's why we tell people try not to get there at the same time everybody else is. If let's say the event starts at 6.30, try to plan to get there maybe around, what would you say, like three maybe, <laughs> right? Honestly, it sounds ridiculous, but that's how you beat the crowds, especially trying to get to the parking garage. Yes, the parking is in a garage, like Brian said, so there's no real advantage parking spot-wise to get there early, but you definitely don't wanna be caught in that long line of cars waiting to get in because that could push back your time of getting in line at the gates. And now finally, we're on to our last question of the day, which comes from Theme Park Studios, and that is, what is the watch list that you should watch leading up to this year's event? So we have a few IPs that are announced for this year already. So you can, of course, watch all of those IPs like the Blumhouse movies, Halloween, and the weekend's videos, as well as all of the classic monsters videos. But then you can also just watch like traditional Halloween type movies. We are seeming this year to have a like traditional Halloween theme. And since a lot of the houses are going to be originals, meaning there's no specific IP attached to them, there's not really a movie that you can watch for them. But for example, for like The Bugs House, you could watch Arachnophobia. I don't know why you'd wanna do that, but you could do that if you wanted to. Or for The Coven House, The Witch's House, you could watch any movie about witches. But that does it for all of our questions for today's video. 
Be sure to leave a comment down below if you have any more questions that we didn't get to, as we will be discussing some of those questions that we didn't get to in today's video in our live on Friday. Also, if you guys really enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so it does help our channel and also take it one step further by joining our YouTube memberships. Now, if you head to our main page over on our YouTube channel, you'll see this big button that says join. If you click on it, there's different tiers so you can get exclusive bonuses to our channel. But by doing so, you become an exclusive member here on the channel that takes you through the fog. But that's going to do it for episode one of our season two countdown to HHN. We hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as we did making it. And until the next one, we can't wait to see you guys there and catch you guys in the fog. Peace out, everybody. Bye. Bye, baby.